Hello everyone, this is Duane, and in this video we're going to show off a FileMaker-based solution that organizes digital assets, and in this case, photos. And then what we want to do is to, using a third-party tool called the Troy File Plugin, it's an extension that you can add to a FileMaker application to give it new capabilities. Using the Troy File Plugin, we're going to organize and export those images into a particular folder structure. The folder structure that we'll be doing is organizing those digital assets by the uh, photographer or the author name and then inside of there put inside the publication folder and then inside of there we'll go ahead and create a structure for the art asset ID or the grouping ID. So the idea is that you'd have one FileMaker database with all of your images inside of them and then export out in these formats so that you can upload it to a server or let someone else have access to it, that type of thing. Um, now, when I had this solution, what I did, or when I had this need, I created an example file, and I do this a lot. So I take an example file and I prototype it out to where it works there. Once I, I see that it works there, then I take that code, harvest it, and put it into my end FileMaker solution. So, um, we'll just take a few minutes and we'll jump right on in. So here I've opened up the file that we're going to use and we're looking at a list view and you can see that we're listing the publications, the photographer, and then the grouping ID. There could be up to four photos that are grouped to a different group ID. So if we go ahead and sort the publication you can see that we have you know a different type of shots, car shots, fun shots, landscapes. And then we have a variety of photographers. So if we sort by the photographer, you can see that, you know, that Dwayne Wright did a number of fun shots and landscapes, but so did Jane Doe and then Smiling Joe. So let's take a look at the form view. So here you can see this is the side shots from Smiling Joe. And, you know, we have four different pictures that are shown for there. And then uh, another one, landscapes done by Smiling Joe. Again, four different photos. Now, what our goal is that we're going to export all these photos out, but we want a particular structure put in place. Let's go ahead and open up our example folder. And here you can see that when we are done, we're going to have a folder for every particular photographer. Inside of there, we will have all the different shots that they had done. And then, within there, if they did multiple shots for, like, the fun shots, then we'll have a folder for each of the grouping IDs. So if we go back into our list view, and go ahead and sort by the photographer, you can see that we'll have, you know, the, the fun shots, the, uh, the landscapes, and that type of thing as they go across. So let's go ahead and run it now. Here's our main script. And what it's going to do, this was my little you know, play area, so we'll put that down. So when we're done, we'll have a series of folders here on the desktop. And you can see FileMaker looks like it's done now. So now we have our Dwayne Wright, Jane Doe, and Smiling Joe photographers inside of Dwayne Wright. You can see we have the car shots, dirty shots, and then there are three groupings of fun shots. So in the car shots, we just have the number 28, and it has those photos in it. And then in the fun shots, you can see again we have the same three groupings and we have the exported JPEGs from there. So when it's all done, we do have a series of portfolios for you, which are our authors, the publications that they worked with, and then the grouping IDs. So let's take a look underneath the hood. So a lot of this folder manipulation magic is done via a third-party plugin called the Troy File Plugin. And you can find more information about that at the troy.com website slash software slash file plugin dot html. It is compatible with Mac and Windows. And the version that I'm working with is the demo version. 
Again, I have no you know, direct affiliation with this company. They don't even know that I'm making this video. Now, when you download in trial, one of the things that you'll get is a big folder full of example files. And the Troy file plugin just does a huge amount of things. And what you can do is to go ahead and open up one of their example files and then work with it back and forth. So you can see that I have probably, oh, let's see, what did I use? I used the create folder um, version. And, oh uh, gosh, I think I might have used the move folder as well. So you can open up this example file, go into all of those, and you do have a large, robust manual in PDF as well that you can uh, go through. So, let's quit out of that. Let's close this up. We'll keep that around just in case. And let's jump on over to the database itself and look underneath the hood. So, quickly underneath the hood, let's go ahead and take a look at our preferences. And in the plugins area, and you can see indeed that I have the Troy file plugin installed and it uh, is activated. And if you click on the configure, you can see that it is telling me that indeed I am working with the demo version. So the uh, under the manage database, we have just the one table with 18 fields. Some regular container fields, global fields, a couple calculation fields going back and forth. And then we have no relationships whatsoever in this file. So most of our heavy lifting is done beneath the scripts. Now I have two different versions of the script and one is called convert link to store. The original set I never really got to work. I knew that this was the way that I wanted to do. I wanted to have a um, a separate script for creating my photograph folders, another one to create my publication folders, and one to set the images inside of the folder structure. Never really got it to work. And when I looked at it, I said, okay, I want to start all over, I want to start fresh, I want to do some master coding. What I ended up doing is to take that entire folder, duplicating it, and then taking a fresh pass at it and changing some of the code in it. And that's one of the lectures you get when you're working with a prototype file, is that you can do that. And then the first time I did it, I worked with images that were stored in a folder. And then I found out my end users were really using with uh, embedded images. So I created a script that just goes ahead and changes those around so that it would work. And then I could harvest that code easier and move it across. So, let's take a look at some of these subscripts. So, as we're looking down here, you can see that I have a preference of a 0, 1, 2, and 3, and that's how they're gone. The 0 is a master script, so it's going to use elements of script 1, 2, and 3. So, let's take a look at that. So, what we do is uh, the very first grouping is prepare the found set. So, we we sort our records so that we have our photographer, uh, publication, and set IDs all grouped like this because this is the way we want our folder structure to end up. Then we go to our very first record and we set a variable equal to the photographer name. And now we're going to create our photographer folders. So what we're going to do is to go to each record and say, hey, if you are you the same photographer as the previous record that I was on? If you are, I don't do a thing. But if it is, run that number one photograph or folder script, subscript, to create the folder that we need. So indeed, we perform the script the very first time because we're on the very first record. We know we need that folder. Then the loop starts. It says, are you the same photographer? If you are not, create a folder. And then reset that variable and then go to the next record and then the loop goes all the way through till it hits the last record. When that's done, all of our folders should be created for the photographers themselves. Then it goes and resets itself and goes back to the very first record. 
and it sets a variable equal to the publication name. Then it'll create the very first publication folder. Now in that subscript, we know that the publication folder should go inside of a photographer folder, and we know that photographer folder exists because we created it up here. So inside of that subscript, it's going to assume that that photographer folder exists, again, because we've already created it. And it kind of does the same thing. Are you the same publication as the last one? If you're not, if you are, don't create me a new folder. But if you are a different publication, then create me a new folder. And it goes all the way down. So this doesn't even really care about the photographer. In that subscript, it knows what folder to put that into. Then we start all over again. It goes to the very first record. And then it just sets the images into the folders. And inside of there, we know which photographer folder it should go into, and which publication folder we go into, and we know those folders are there because we just created them in the earlier script. And then we do our end loop. So quickly let's just go through these uh, subscript folders. They're creating the photographer folder I pulled right out of the Troy file uh, plugin example. So it just, and basically we're just creating folders on the desktop. The publication folder, it creates the folder, but it has to know what author to put it into. So in the syntax here, you can see that I use a portfolios folder to publication, which uses a, you know, a, a calculation field. And the only reason that I did that is so I could eyeball it. You could hard code it, but it literally is just... You know, the field that says what is the photographer and the field that says what is the publication and then the delineator that Troy likes, which is the colon. So again, you could just put that coding right in. And then finally, the set folders with images. Well, it doesn't even worry about the folders because they should all be created. So I'm not even using the Troy file plugin at that point in time. I'm just exporting images. And there's a picture one, two, three, and four. Literally just because the way that, you know, I set this up is that we have four particular fields that could hold images. And this just tests to make sure that field, if it's empty, that I don't e try to export an image to it. But if it isn't, I do. And I give it the right name. And that's your standard script exporting kind of action where you set a variable to where the path should go. And then inside the expect field uh, contents in the specification, you just reference the variable name itself. So, uh, that's our presentation. We created a FileMaker database to store images, and we created a structure that we can export those images out into a new folder path, either on our local hard drive, and of course, with a little elaboration, you could put it on a centralized server. And then, of course, on top of that, you could add a lot of the FileMaker features like email notifications or time stamping or, you know, that type of thing. Uh, this was a brief example, and if you have any questions or anything else like that, please feel free to send me an email at info at Thanks.